All right, so in today's video, we are gonna be removing this open vent cylinder and cold water storage tank and replacing this with an electric direct thermal store. The reason why I'm going for a thermal store is because we're in a block of flats, there's nowhere to run the discharge for D1 and D2. So we're not going for unvented. With the thermal store, you don't need to worry about any overflows or anything like that. And it still gives the customer mains pressure hot water. So I'm gonna start draining this off and then we'll get the new one out. Okay, so the cylinder and the storage tank is out. It's actually pretty easy because the frame that the cold water storage tank was sitting on was separate, so it was just bolted down. So under the two bolts, once that was drained down, we were able to just slide the whole thing off. Then obviously the cylinder just came out and the frame just slid out. So, so far it's been straightforward. We've now got our cold mains coming in there. We've got the cold to the bathroom. We've got the hot to the property. So once the thermal store is in, from here we're gonna upsize that to 22 scale reducer bring it down up into the cylinder tee off go carry on into the cold to the rest of the flat and then obviously the hot will just come off and straight onto there we've got a bit of overflow there as well so we'll tie that in as well so yeah we've got the new one upstairs already so just gotta unpackage that get it in position and then just start mocking up our pipe work all right so josh is just sorting out a little bit of alteration for the cold mains in here so Customer wants us to, where the cold mount at the moment is coming up from the bottom and up, we're just raising it up, coming through this wall here. And then from there, just tying it back into the cold mains, which is that bottom pipe there. So he's doing some work on the bathroom. So uh, we're just gonna move that over and then cut that bottom leg out. So just making that adjustment first before we get the cylinder in, because once that's in, we won't be able to do anything behind it. Right, so we're all piped up. Water's on, I've just got to fill up the cylinder. I'm just going to add some inhibitor to the overflow and then connect the overflow onto here. But we've done the incoming cold main from there. So that's upgraded to 22 from there. Butterfly valve, scale reducer, tease into the thermal store. So that's going to do the hot water delivery. And then we've linked back up here and going cold to the rest of the flat as well. So yeah, so it's all on, it's all live. We've just got, uh, I'm gonna fill this up in a moment as soon as I've added something here, but we're in. Sort out the overflow and then wire it up and we should be done. Right, that's the thermal store all done, all piped up. So yeah, we've got uh, the cold main coming in from there. Put a little butterfly isolation valve there, scale reducer coming down, teeing into the actual thermal store coil and then coming back around to serve the rest of the flat. And then we'll see the hot, it will go in through that coil, come back out through that blending valve and serve the rest of the property. Overflow's all done as well. So just letting it warm up now. And then, yeah, we're all good to go. We interrupt this video with a very important message from Uncle. If you like what you're watching, don't forget to press the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. And most importantly, don't forget to press the little ding, ding, ding bell button. That way you'll be informed of every new video that is uploaded. Thank you. Come again. Okay, so got a boiler service to do on this Ideal i Mini. Uh, so I came here a year ago approximately. Um, customers just recently bought the place and moved in. Um, they asked me to do an inspection on it. Found out the time that the turret seal on the Ideals, you know, you, you can get pinched um, and you get the scaling on it. So that was leaking, well, it was completely pinched. So I had to replace that, uh, replace the burner seal, gave it a full service at the time. The flue wasn't sealed either, so I sorted all that out. It's all been working fine, so I'm back here for an annual service this year. I reported they're having some issues with the heating and the hot water running at the same time. So first thing I'm gonna do is just pop my temperature clamps, one on the flow, one on the hot. I'm gonna run a hot tap and see if there's any heat going down the flow pipe, which would indicate a possible issue with the diverter valve. If not, I'll then move that flow to the cold mains. And we're looking for an approximately 35 degree rise. If we haven't got that, then, then that could indicate a blocking in plate heat exchange. So, going to start on those tests uh, before I do the service and go from there. So as you guys saw, um, on the temperature readings, the flow pipe the temperature was just shooting straight up, uh, got up to about 75 degrees. That wasn't getting as hot, so that tells me we've got a problem with the diverter valve. Another thing I've just picked up today, that's starting to split. I don't think it's gone just yet, but that's on its way out. The sump 
seems to be okay at the moment, but only time will tell. And overall, the boiler's not in great condition. It's had a few problems before, so um, the customers already said that they're considering getting the boiler changed because they've been here a year. They don't want to. They've already spent a bit of money on it last year with me. May not want to keep spending money on a boiler, which obviously there's no guarantee on it. I mean, there's no system filter or anything like that on here, so they may consider putting a new boiler in uh, with a longer warranty. Obviously, would come with a filter, lime scale reducer, etc., um, and alleviate all these other issues that they've been having. But we'll have a chat with them and see what they want to do. But in the meantime, I'm just going to carry on doing the service for today and at least get this up and running. Uh, well, keep it running for now. So on this job we've got a HIU, um, heat interface unit. So if you're not familiar with these, you've got district heating. So you've got from the plant room, you've got a flame return, which goes through a pump and a plate. Um, so you've got one plate there, which is, uh, one plate will be for your domestic water, for your, just like a normal plate heat exchanger. And here we go, you've got the big plate here. So that's for your central heating. So then I haven't seen what orientation these are in yet, but you'll have, uh, I'll figure that out in a minute, see which what. But yeah, one of them will be a cold mains in, which is going to be that one. Uh, I'm just assuming that's coming from there. Two of these will be your center eating flying returns for the, uh, for the flat. And then one of them will be your domestic hot water output. I'm not sure if that's the order. All I know at the moment is that's our flying returns from the uh, plant room. And then I'm gonna figure out what's going on here and find out why the heating's not working. Right, so let's test the thermostat first. So turn that up to 30. Right, that's clicked on. And now I should be getting power on this pump. I think the pump's gone. All right, let me test it electrically to make sure we've got movement on the pump. If the pump's not spinning, then obviously that's gonna be the first thing to, to sort out. Right, I'm gonna try and test this with one hand. Uh, make sure that it doesn't slip off anywhere. Get that into live, there we go. Right, so we've got 230. Going there. Um, see if I can get. I've tested this already, but I just want to try and get it on video if I can. Uh, there. Right. And we've got 230 between live and neutral. And just doing our polarity checks first. Yeah, and nothing between neutral and earth. So we've got power going to the pump, um, but that pump's not spinning. If I just test that with the volt stick, so right, that's when I'm going to turn the stack down and that should go off. Right. Yep, that's clicked off. Power's gone off. Let's just click it back on again. Wait for that to click. There we go. Power's back. So, changing that pump should sort it out because the hot water side is working. Um, they've got no issues with the hot water, but the Heating side's not working, which is why the first thing I thought, check the thermostat, check the power to the pump. We've got power to the pump, pump's not spinning. Bingo, got no heating. Okay, so new pump's on. There's the old one. So you can see it looks a bit manky there. Um, moment of truth. Let's power that on. Right, I might need to go and turn the stat up. One second. Right, let's turn that up. Click. 
click. Right, we have a click. Well, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but that pump is spinning already. I can feel it. Couldn't even feel, couldn't even feel that one spinning before. That one is spinning straight away. So now that's gonna be drawing heat from the primary going around. And depending on what's cooling, whether it's heating hot water, um, you've got an actuator there that will divert um, the heat to the main plate heat exchanger and that will then do the uh, central heating circuit around and then you've got your domestic plate there which is basically just like a big plate heat exchanger for your domestic hot water so yeah just gonna go around all the radiators making sure everything's working and we should be good to go